was the son of a pizza man, the only boy who could ever feed me. Was the son of a pizza man. Hi, my name is Tony Scardino, sometimes better known as Professor Pizza. I am the general manager, pizza aficionado here at Dobro's New York style pizza oh, and sub shop, right here at 400 North State Street, right downtown in Chicago by the House of Blues. Here we do everything from New York slices to grammar slices, Sicilians, uh, garlic, garlic sticks, subs, and everything in between. So just trying to infuse a little of my Italian-American background into food that we all know and love. Professor Pizza came to be because of a series of different opportunities to go and speak at DePaul University here in Lincoln Park, Chicago, on a variety of different food, pizza, Italian cuisine type topics. And at the time, I was just kind of building my social media presence and didn't really have any branding behind it, but I knew I needed something that was different than just another Italian name with a vowel at the end of it and Anthony at the beginning of it. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one Professor Pizza. Um, you know, often imitated, uh, <laughs> seldom duplicated sort of thing. But uh, it started as a hashtag for my social media. And uh, I had some friends and some family reach out to me and say, wow, that's something special. You should actually really stick to that and uh, run with it. And at first I'm like, it's cheesy, it's silly. It's, you know, I want to take myself not too seriously, but maybe more and more seriously than that. And the more I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, it is cheesy, so is pizza. What am I really trying to accomplish here? A brand that is all my own and reflects the sort of things that I do, which is cheesy, delicious, good pizza. So Professor Pizza it is, and it's stuck from there on out. So I had the opportunity to work in a variety of different pizzerias, Italian restaurants, uh, restaurants that are more on the fine dining scale of uh, the spectrum. And I wanted to take all of that knowledge and culminate it into one kind of pizza focused career. But I knew I needed some furthering of my education to kind of bring it to the next level. And for years, I had been following a gentleman who was really kind of like the Michael Jordan figure globally of our industry, and that's Tony Gemignani, who's based in San Francisco. We're lucky enough to do a pop up here with him that you guys were at. Um, She's about a month or so ago at this point, uh, doing all of Chicago style pizzas. But Tony and I were met through Facebook, and I was that kid that just had a million different questions for him. And one day he was just like, you know what? I don't want to type anymore. Here's my cell phone number. Give me a call. So I gave him a call, and I was like hyperventilating and like putting him on hold so I could catch my breath and then ask him another question and that sort of thing. I laugh at that now because I consider him to be one of my closest friends. Uh, but still a hero of mine. And so the relationship started just answering some of those basic questions I had about potentially one day starting a pizzeria of my own, right? And he came out here for a book signing and for a uh, opportunity to be present for the 50th anniversary of J.B. Alberto's Pizzeria, which is a good friend of ours, Tony Traiano, runs that spot, the Chicago Institution for sure. And so we met there, and he was like, you know what, you should come out to the school. And I'm like, yeah, I've wanted to years. I think I've wanted it for years. I think it's the right time now. And so some months later, I went out to San Francisco for a couple weeks and studied under him and Laura Meyer and uh, a bunch of his other uh, folks that are under the Tony's Pizza Napolitana umbrella and really matured my pizza knowledge. From there, he said, you should come out to Vegas and help us with Pizza Expo. Mm -hmm. I've now done that three years in a row. Um, in October, I'll be helping him with the Caputo Cup and competing for the second time there in Atlantic City. I'll be competing this coming spring for the second time uh, in Vegas with Pizza Expo. And so all of those different things together have matured and blossomed my relationship with Gemignani. So, a couple things. Um, a couple things that are true, whether you're in the pizzeria or in your home kitchen, which is definitely mature your dough. Take the time, take the two or three days to 
allow your dough to relax, build flavor, uh, build a complex uh, network. This is what's going to make your pizza more digestible, more delicious, easier to work with, easier to brown, and just better through and through. Um, along those same lines of advice that can go for the pizzeria or the home is ingredients. If you buy the best ingredients and don't get in their way too much, you're going to come out with probably a pretty great product. Uh, I just made pizza here with local mushrooms, local oyster mushrooms, and a pesto that we made today. It's a two ingredient pizza, but I think it's jam packed with flavor. And you can do that if you buy great ingredients. So mature your dough, use room temperature dough, use as hot an oven as you possibly can. Get not one, but two baking steels. And I say steels as opposed to stones because while well, they're a little bit more money, they'll be the only baking steels you ever buy. Where stones, they tend to break. They tend to be harder to clean, so on and so forth. Uh, so work as it as hot an oven as you can. Um, mature your dough several days. Throw a browning agent in there, whether that's honey, malt, uh, agave, sugar. Any of these things will help brown your dough in a quicker period of time, which is what you're looking for so that you don't dry out your pizza a lot longer than necessary bake time. JB Alberto's is very high on that list. Uh, Marie's Pizza and Liquors in uh, Albany Park is a Chicago classic that I think a lot of people skip by for no good reason at all. Um, Vito and Nick's on the south side is fantastic. Uh, those are all great thin crust spots. JB Alberto's is a pizza in the pan as well, which is very unique to them. It's delicious. It's a little bit heavier as well. Um, but if you're thinking about cast iron and deep dish, I'd skip by the big three, which I consider to be Gino's East, Uno's, and Dewey's kind of under one umbrella, um, and uh, I guess big four. Uh, Lil and oh, that's it. Uh, I'd skip by those, honestly. I think they're uh, living on their laurels, and they can come here at 400 North State and fight me about it if they disagree, but. Pequod's is really, is really the answer for the Chicago pizza that Chicagoans eat, as far as the home stuff goes. So, I think in terms of our regional specialties, those are probably the places, um, but we've kind of got a 2.0 renaissance of pizza happening in Chicago that allows for places like Dobro's, that's a New York style joint, places like Mulchi that now has locations in the West Loop and with the park doing Pizza Romana. Uh, Spaganopoli and Fornaroso uh, doing Neapolitan pizza, Neo Neapolitan pizza from Poly G's, which I had the opportunity to help open. So these are all part of the 2.0 pizza renaissance happening here in Chicago, really across the country. We're starting to bridge the gap now more than ever between chefs and pizza. And I think that goes back to my answer to one of our previous questions, which is we rely on the same things ingredients and putting time and effort into our craft. So as we move, not necessarily away from sausage and pepperoni, but put more thought into, okay, what sausage are we buying? What pepperoni are we buying? Is it the only salami product we're buying? Do we have any specialty cheeses in the house? Are we going to the farmer's market? Are we using the best produce we could possibly use? These are things that are kind of helping us bridge the gap between the upscale restaurant scene here in Chicago and pizza as I hope it'll be in the future. The only one who could ever need me was the son of a pizza man. The only boy who could ever feed me was the son of a pizza man. Yes, he was.